Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how I created this soft pastel painting of an ocean wave. First I'm going to give you a little tour around my workstation so you can see which supplies I'm using. I've put the full supplies list on my blog with a link in the description if you need the links, but I've got this awesome mini set of marine shades from Art Spectrum. These pastels are affordable and I've pretty much got every colour I need here for this painting. So I've got a few other colours from Unison, a purple shade which I'll use for the shadows, and a light grey that looks almost white. Then I've also got this blending tool which is called a soft tool from Pan Pastel. I also use a soft brush for blending, but the sponge tool is useful because it presses the pastel into the paper and gives a more subtle blend. I'm working on a grey tone pastel mat that I've taped some board with painter's masking tape and propped upright. I find it helpful to prop pastel paintings up like this and put a cover underneath. Pastels get quite dusty so it prevents pastel from pooling and smudging on the drawing and it also keeps the workstation a bit cleaner. The tape helps to make clean edges around your drawing. I'm starting the drawing with the sky and I'm using the colour Marine Blue B which is a light grey green blue. The great thing about these pastels and other square pastels, for example Terry Ludwig's, is that you can hold them on their side like this to cover large areas, which is perfect for painting skies. If you're not sure if a colour is going to match or not, then you can test them on a scrap piece of paper before applying it to your surface. I'm blending the pastel to smooth out the sky and cover any bits of the paper that I might have missed. I want the sky to look a bit more lively and interesting, so I'm going to create a two-tone blend instead of it just being one block colour. The colour at the top will be a more saturated blue, so I'm lightly painting over the greyish blue with a light primary cyan. Now I'm going to blend all this out with my sponge tool, but use your fingers or even a brush. The brush will be a more effective blender, but it also brushes a lot of the pigment dust off of the surface, so the sponge tool gives a much more subtle blend. It's looking pretty smooth now, so I'll start on the sea. I'm very lightly lining the horizon with the edge of my ultramarine pastel. This is very dark in value and way too saturated, so I'm going to tone it down with my marine blue D colour, which is a dark neutral blue green. I'm blending these colours into each other with my soft sponge tool. So a lot of pastel sets come with a huge variety of colours, but it's possible to mix colours on the surface if you haven't got a large set. So here I'm just showing you how you can create a piece with a lot of tonal variation with around just 10 colours. So I'm roughly scumbling the light shade over the dark shade, which is reducing the saturation to make the colour appear more realistic. Near the horizon we have some lighter coloured waves, so I'm making some horizontal lines with a lighter turquoise and then blending it out with a sponge. Now I'm drawing out the shape of the wave, the outline of the foam, and blocking in the shadows with my teal colour. The wave slants up to the right a little bit. I'm starting the drawing with a mid-tone so that I can go in and subtly increase the contrast at a later stage. Then I'm going in with my lighter greyish green blue to block in where some of the foam will be. This will act as the mid-tone shadow colour, so I'll layer a light highlight tone over the top of this at a later stage. I'm adding in some darker shadows as the next step to painting the wave will be increasing the contrast to create form and volume. This involves subtly increasing the contrast and blending the colours out to give it a soft appearance. The method I'm using here to subtly increase the contrast is that I'm dabbing this darkest shade in with a sponge. The darkest colour that I'm using is this unison violet shade which is layered over the dark teal colour. When mixed into each other, these colours make more of a neutral mix, which is perfect for the shadow tone. Unison pastels are even softer than Art Spectrum, so I'm using the lightest touch I can with this sponge. A good tip is to layer the soft pastel over the hard pastel, that way it adheres to the paper better. I'm also jumping straight into adding some mid-tone highlights on the lip of the wave where it's curling over and the light is shining through. I find it helpful to start adding definition early on as it helps me to envision the finished piece better. I'm blending the lighter turquoise tones into the mid-tones and into the shadows. I'm taking care not to overblend, but I want the base to have a smooth gradation so that the water has a softer appearance when I come to layer the details on top. This is also working to cover up the remaining grey of the paper that is showing through at this stage. I'm 
Just beneath where the wave is curling on the right here, a shadow is being cast. The shadow is more green in tone than other dark areas of the artwork, so I'm mixing a few different colours. The dark greyish teal colour and the lighter turquoise to show roughly where the light is coming through. To capture the essence of the wave before we think about adding any details, we have to create volume. We can do that effectively by focusing on values and tone. We want the contrast between the dark and light to emulate the wave. Next I'm going to start creating some definition in the foam. The lightest areas are created with my off-white colour and an ultra-light turquoise. The mid-tones are created with my light grey teal and the shadows with the violet colour and the dark teal. The shadow in the foam sits in the middle here, just to the right of where this light section is sticking out. I'm making the shadows quite dark with my unison violet colour and the teal colour. I'm filling in the rest of this foam section with the mid-tone colour. Then after that I'm going to create the shadows underneath the wave with my violet unison colour. I'm using the same colour that I used for the mid-tone of the foam for the front section of the water and I'm using the side of the pastel to cover more ground more quickly. I'm blending it out to cover the edges of the paper and any bits of the paper that are still left uncovered. I'm making the shadow tones look more dispersed in the front of the water section by blending in the teal colour. This adds more depth and the appearance of the wave is starting to take shape now. So the next stage will just be adding in the details and adding in the highlights and increasing the contrast in the shadows in some sections. I'm using the stippling technique now to increase the contrast even more in the foam. Stippling is a great technique to use for wave spray and foam because it adds texture. So to use this technique, dot the pastel into the paper in short sharp strokes. To create even more volume in the barrel of the wave, take a bright turquoise colour and draw lines curving diagonally down to the right. It should give the impression of the wave's volume and curvature. Blend these out and if you want to, go and increase the darkness around the highlights slightly with your mid-tone from the very top of the wave with some extra curved lines. For the foam in front of the wave, I drew with my lightest turquoise colour. These lines appear abstract but I want to make it appear as if the foam is being drawn into the wave. I blended this out with a brush which has got rid of most of the excess pigment dust. This way the lines look much less pronounced. The final details have slightly harder edges than the rest of the artwork. I won't blend them out as much to make the viewer focus in on them more. When we apply the lighter colours on top, they'll pop out, giving the appearance of the foam spraying. The aim is to create volume, then with the lighter tones create the illusion of movement. I want to make this wave look like it's crashing and hurtling towards the shore. One final trick to make realistic looking spray from the foam is to get your lightest colour and scratch the pastel onto the paper. You can do this with a knife or with your nail, but you'll need to fix it in place, so press some acid free paper over the top. I'm using glassine paper as the pastel won't transfer onto it. So that'll just fix all these tiny little particles of pastel in place and give the impression of realistic foam spray. The final optional step is spraying the finished artwork with some fixative. Soft pastel never fully dries or sets, so by spraying it you can protect your artwork from smudging and moisture. If you're not sure which fixative to get, check out my supplies list on the blog. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, if you did I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like. Hope you guys have a brilliant week and see you next time.